Our natural world is full of wonders, and many of these wonders are now coming to an end. In Africa, wildebeest used to have the open Serengeti plain for their migration routes, thousand miles by millions of animals. The only thing they had to fear were other animals, crossing rivers where crocodiles lay in ambush, or in the high grass, lions, cheetahs and leopards. Man is encroaching on their land, there's fences, animals, livestock. Many of these things will be ending. In the oceans, humpback whales come up to Alaska in the summer to feed and grow. Then they swim thousands of miles to Hawaii and Mexico for calving season and mating again. Tiny hummingbirds, which I love to film here in British Columbia, fly to the Caribbean and Mexico for the winter, only to return each spring, thousands of miles, not only to British Columbia, but all the way up to Alaska. Amazing. But perhaps one of the most unique migrations is done by the salmon. Every one of these salmon you see were born in the river where they've returned to four years later. They're born in freshwater river, often hundreds of miles away from the ocean. In the springtime, when the rivers are high with runoff and silt, debris, the tiny fish have hatched from eggs and they're making their way down the rivers to the ocean. They enter the ocean after they made it through all sorts of obstacles and in the ocean they start a great migration route from our Pacific salmon from British Columbia they enter into the Pacific Ocean by Vancouver and the Fraser River which is extremely polluted they swim up by Vancouver Island up along the coast past Alaska out into the North Pacific over towards Japan making a huge circle timing is everything for them it's a timing it's a circle of life because in four years they return to the very same rivers swimming up the very same river they exited up upstream this time through fast currents, rapids, getting beaten up by rocks. Fishermen's nets are strung to try and capture them. Bears come down. Eagles soar overhead looking for salmon. And the lucky ones that make it up in the rivers to spawn will die. The ultimate sacrifice for your species this has been going on for millions of years and last year Cindy and I were really fortunate that we went to the Adams River when there was a record run of sockeye salmon. It was estimated that 19 million fish entered the Fraser River with about 9 million going into the Adams River. Already you can see the eggs floating by. They lay their eggs. Those eggs will hatch in the springtime. This year, it's not a record run. The numbers are down. They've crashed. There might only be a million fish returning this year. And not only this year, but for the next few years. The cause of this decline is hard to figure. I mean, there's a, out in the ocean, there are fishermen that are chasing the salmon with huge ships, nets. There's airplanes, spotter airplanes that go up looking for where the fish are congregating radioing that information to the fishing fleet and once they're out in the open Pacific there's no rules or regulation of course they have to dodge killer whales and sea lions and other seals and it, like I said when they're coming up the rivers there's uh, at the mouth of the Fras Fraser River there's a big fishery and on the way up there are natives casting their nets But there's other dangers for them. And one of the big dangers that's been talked about a lot right now are salmon farms along the Pacific coast of British Columbia. 
and there are people who feel that the conditions at the salmon farms are ripe for disease, sea lice, and other things to get out into the wild stock, and that our wild stock of salmon could be endangered, decimated. Of course, the government will hear none of that. Industry will hear none of that. It's hard to know who to believe, but the one thing that I do know is that this year the salmon population is down and already predictions are for the next couple of years for the same thing to happen. And if your po population is down now, you know they're not going to be laying as many eggs. There's going to be less making it back to the ocean, less fish for the predators out there, predators that depend on it. Don't, don't think about man. Think about uh, killer whales and seals that depend on this. We can eat other things. We can catch other fish. We can eat other meats. We can eat vegetables, whatever. But there are animals that depend on this. There are rivers in North America where grizzly bears depend on salmon coming up to fatten up so that they can make it through winter. One species, one species of fish can have an impact on so many other species of life on Earth. I hope salmon populations will always be high. I hope we can preserve the species and that more people will have a chance to see this amazing migration. Thank you.